Good evening, everyone. I am your host and instructor, Lainey Shaughnessy, and welcome to Spindle TV, your best source for CNC CAD CAM training videos. Spindle TV is brought to you by Digital Woodcarver, inspiring your creativity and providing you with the tools to create your own unique masterpieces. Hello, hello. How is everybody doing this evening? I hope you guys and girls are all doing well. Tonight, we're gonna start a uh, the first course in a series called My Country Kitchen. And uh, what we're gonna look at is some cool accessories for the home kitchen. Uh, we're gonna start off with some uh, ways of looking at uh, different things like napkin holders uh, paper towel holders and stuff something really uh, crafty uh, that look really nice that we can add some elements to that are great sellers uh, at the farmers markets or the flea markets or the craft fairs and things um, at retail stores you know uh, whatever that may be we're gonna we're gonna start uh, like I said we're gonna kind of be in the linen area as far as uh, paper towel holders napkins and things like that we'll move into some like cutting boards trivets uh, a lot of different elements uh, uh, and things uh, for the kitchen we're gonna start this uh, you know series of training and so um, with that being said uh, I hope everyone's doing well thank you for joining me tonight uh, I know last night we had to postpone uh, I was just getting back from our uh, the great American tiny house show where we exhibited in North Carolina and uh, uh, by the time I got back, I wasn't able to get things um, uh, get things uh, finished in time and ready to go before class, so I had to postpone to this evening. All right, so, uh, and again, uh, welcome everyone. Let's go ahead and let's jump over into our uh, software. Okay, so in the Vetric software, we're going to look at a couple of uh, different uh, styles or designs and things. And unfortunately, I don't have any images to show you. So what we're going to do is on uh, one of them, uh, we're going to uh, create it three-dimensionally and virtually in SketchUp. Uh, we'll uh, we'll kind of go through and... Uh, you know create uh, the look and what we're going for and stuff and then we're gonna come over to the vetric and we're actually gonna you know draw these out we're gonna have a uh, for tonight's class we're going to have a very simple uh, napkin holder nice little napkin holder uh, we're gonna have a stand-up paper towel holder for countertops and a, a wall hanging paper towel holder for uh, hanging on the wall of a kitchen and with these, uh, your interpretation is going to be uh, vital because you know we can really customize them any way we want. We can customize them with very nice decorative carvings, uh, three-dimensional carvings, uh, simple V carvings, uh, and things, and and we can add some you know uh, all, all kinds of different things in there. And so, with that being said, uh, let's look at a very basic. Uh, napkin holder and what we're gonna do is we're gonna virtually draw this out um, and uh, in SketchUp uh, so you can kind of get the general idea of where we're heading and then we're gonna look at how we would lay this out and create it in our Vetric software SketchUp for those of you that may or may not know is a wonderful uh, three-dimensional project uh, design software uh, that you can find uh, online free you can also pay for it if you want to but I use the free version SketchUp 8 and uh, I've never uh, seen a need to to purchase it uh, the the free version gives me everything that I need to be able to virtually create uh, three-dimensional models and things and um, go from there alright so the first thing that we're uh, going to do 
is uh, we're going to as you can see here I have a uh, drawing already started uh, in here with just some general shapes and things and uh, if we were to design this from scratch let's go ahead and uh, get rid of everything and let's come in here to our camera view and let's look at a uh, top view here and in this top view we're going to start off with a very simple rectangle now um, napkins uh, we're going to start off with the napkin holder uh, napkins uh, generally have a size like uh, I guess you would kind of consider them cocktail napkins or, or uh, the you know the napkins that you would have at picnics and things like that um, and they generally have a size of about five and a half by five and a half now you would size this up uh, accordingly to you know fit the napkin size that you're going to be using right uh, so what we're going to do is uh, for this I'm going to go with a six inch by six inch rectangle and let's go ahead and get this kind of tilted so you can see what's happening here um, and with the six by six rectangle I I'm gonna be using a uh, half inch material for the base uh, I can use half inch material for the top as well uh, we can go three quarter inch all the way if you know if we wanted to uh, we will be uh, two things that we'll we will be using in this project that are not uh, going to be made on the CNC is our dowels so we're going to be utilizing uh, some uh, short piece uh, pieces two short pieces of quarter inch dowel stock and so let's go ahead and I want to draw out a place I'm going to snap to the center of this and I'm going to create a uh, small little area here with a um, half inch circle here and if I snap to this side, do the same thing with a half, oops, let's undo that. I put in the diameter instead of the radius, 0.25 radius, there we go. And in the center here, I'm going to create my uh, eighth inch uh, radius, which would be a quarter for my quarter inch dowel. And now I can go through and I'm gonna just delete some lines. So I'm gonna delete this line here this guy here we're going to zoom in if we uh, delete this line this line and this line same thing over here these three guys here now I'm gonna what's called push pull and I'm gonna pull this up to my half inch and uh, so this is gonna be my uh, basically a similar kind of my how my base is going to look now we can get much fancier here on the edge if we want more of a curve uh, if we want more of a curve here uh, we can create that uh, like an arc or, or what have you and um, let's see if we can so it doesn't look like two big old half inch uh, little half circles coming out of there let's give it a nice little uh, slope so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my uh, measure tool and create a guideline and my center point on this six by six is three inches and so from this center point, I'm going to come out uh, probably about uh, three quarters of an inch and then in one direction and three quarters of an inch in another. And what this will do is this will give me a place that I can uh, create my kind of arc. I'm just going to create a nice little arc here. And on that bulge, I'm going to probably let's see here what would be a good uh, what would be a nice subtle distance let's go 3 8 point 375 okay and same thing here line line arc to 0.375 wonderful 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 now uh, I want to go ahead and take and push pull these tools here let's push this down and I wanted to just snap it into there let's spin this around and do the same thing with this surface let's snap it to there 
now that I've had that now that I have that surface created I can actually kind of blend this in by removing uh, these lines uh, even this arc here uh, same thing over here uh, I can remove this arc and these lines and, and what that does is that gives my piece uh, the illusion of a full piece here and I'm going to do the same thing up here uh, let's first get rid of uh, oops don't want to draw to the right because that's going to select everything let's get rid of these guidelines and then I'm going to delete these three lines and that looks much more pleasing uh, than you know the just those two half circles out now this is going to be the base and so uh, from here we're going to have some dowels right we're gonna have some dowels sticking up and you're you know it just depends on how big of a stack right how big of a stack of dowels uh, we're you know uh, would end up using and um, so let's do, 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 do uh, let's do let me see if I can get I gotta orbit this so I can see the bottom of the hole there and do I have that hole cut out all the way through no okay um, that way I can see the bottom so that way when I push pull I can actually grab that layer in there and I can pull that up so if my base is three inches or a uh, uh, half inch and I, let's say I want a three inch dowel. Let's go 3.5 there. And let's spin this thing around over here. Sorry about the orbiting. But let's spin this around and see if I can grab that surface in there nice and go 3.5. All right, let's get into our standard camera view and let's go from the front. So you can kind of see uh, how this would come together. now. Uh, now that I had that, I'm going to group this together as, as one group, and uh, that way it's kind of a component in itself. So anything I do, uh, it will do to all. So first thing I'm going to do is give it just a little bit of color, right? A little bit of color, so it make it look like a piece of wood. Uh, so we'll go with a nice little uh, light brown. Oh, that's too dark. Let's go with a little lighter tan there. All right, just so you can see the the so the the, the pieces will be a little bit uh, defined and stuff. Um, now, if I wanted to come in here, I could uh, give my dowels uh, so they stand out a little bit. I could give them a bit of a different uh, color. Where's all my where's all my pretty colors? Am I there? That's kind of too contrast, right? It doesn't contrast, contrast, Laney, contrast. So let's go with that, and then let's uh, let's do 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 do. That's good enough. All right, it ain't got to be pretty. It's just for demonstration purposes. All right, so. Uh, with this, this is going to be our base, right? And so we would have a stack of napkins in here. And uh, like I said, our napkins, if I, if I come into a top view, like I'm looking down on it here, uh, our napkins uh, would generally uh, be about five and a half by five and a half inches in here, right? And then however big a stack we want. Well, what we need now is the, like a little holder at the top, right? That's going to slide over these dowels. It's going to kind of create that, that, that paperweight in a sense <laughs> that's going to hold it on. And this is where we're going to do some decorative carving. Uh, and all so let's go ahead and uh, get this drawn so what we're gonna do is we're gonna cheat so we don't have to redraw this uh, we're going to are we gonna cheat um, yes we are and how we're gonna cheat is we're going to come in and we're going to hold down or hit the move button we're gonna hold down the control key uh, and I'm gonna drag a copy up of this it's gonna get deleted here in a minute uh, once I come into this here uh, we're going to uh, delete that ring we're going to delete 
that ring and while I'm in here I'm not going to use this rectangle right we got it we're gonna have a nice little decorative look so let's go with a straight line and let's uh, snap a line from here to here and over here we'll snap a line from here to here and what this will allow me to do is um, what will this allow me to do <laughs> this will allow me to take and push pull Oop. first thing you gotta do first thing you gotta do is let me undo all of that uh, I need to make this piece unique um, it's Im most important that I make it unique meaning that I if I don't then any change that I do in it will be done to the other one below it and I don't want to change that so now once again real quick repeat uh, we're gonna delete delete grab that delete it grab that delete it there we go <clears throat> and uh, uh, straight line I'm gonna oh uh, get on there snap from there oh I can't see that let's orbit there we go get back into my line tool straight line from there to there there to there and the only reason I'm drawing this in here is just to give you guys a visual what our end game is gonna look like and then we're going to uh, come in and um, get rid of that get rid of that and what I'd like to see is I would like to see a nice let's see if I can find my midpoint where's my midpoint three quarters of an inch uh, what's my full measurement here inch and a half so yep three quarters of an inch would be my midpoint that way uh, and let's let's grab a measurement from here to here is uh, six and three quarters so six and three quarters would be three and three eighths right three and three eighths so three point three seven five and let's put a little dot right there in the middle what that'll do is that'll give me a way to uh, put in kind of a my circle here I want a circle nice little circle all right uh, let's go ahead and orbit this so I can push pull this down a half inch rotate around push pull this down a half inch and let's go ahead now and get rid of these lines to make this one solid piece get rid of these lines to make this one solid piece you can start to uh, smell what the rock is cooking all right so uh, now if I uh, create a component out of this now so if we take uh, this here um, and let's kind of go from a side view camera front all right and um, with this you know now we have uh, kind of that if I let's not do that let me see if I can tilt it just a little bit there we go that way I can grab this guy right here um, so I can move up and down and so with our napkins and all now we have a nice little net I keep pulling it off of the post um, we have a nice little napkin holder that we can kind of uh, hold down those tops and what we've got is uh, we've got a nice place here right here to customize this any way we want uh, you know we can have a nice uh, three-dimensional picture uh, you know carving here uh, uh, we could have uh, some text we could have uh, some nice chip V carving you know uh, kind of just, just a nice uh, uh, flourish pattern or something we can customize it any way we want but the basic elements for this uh, napkin holder is a base is a base uh, we're gonna have uh, some places for our dowel stock to go into and then we're going to have our weight I would call it I, I don't know uh, you know our hold down 
uh, and everything. And our hold down is where all the customization is going to go. I mean, it, hell, it could have you know some nice text curving around here it could have you know just whatever we want you know think of like if it was a, a little uh, diner a little cafe uh, you know you could have their 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 company name in here or something uh, just a really nice uh, decorative um, holder right so this is a very basic uh, basic um, uh, Oh, what am I trying to say? A very basic uh, napkin holder, right? You know, for any occasion. It's great for outdoors, you know, uh, picnics and all where the wind is blowing. You got a little weight here that holds your, uh, you know, your picnic napkins. But this is going to be the part that we're going to create and cut out in Vetric. And, and I mean, really, what is it? It's two profile cuts, right? To cut out the two shapes. We've got two drilling operations or pocket operations, whichever one you want to use for the dowel holes. Uh, we're going to have a couple of pieces of three and a half inch dowel, quarter inch dowel. And then uh, in our top piece, we, we've got total control to do whatever we want to customize this top to really give it a nice little bit of flair, whether it be a model carving in there of an animal or, you know, floral or whatever it may be. So let's go into the Vetric and uh, let's see how we can uh, very simply uh, recreate this part. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is for my own uh, edification is I'm going to take a measurement here uh, and let's see if I can snap to my center two and uh, 15 16 we're gonna round that off to a nice uh, number fit instead of the 64s but uh, this is gonna be our basic size so what I'm doing is I'm just checking my measurements here uh, and I'll one and a half inches good all right, so let's uh, get back into the Vetric software and let's lay this out. Now, both of these parts uh, could be cut out of uh, one piece of wood. Uh, you can cut them out of a separate piece of wood. I'm going to cut them out of one piece of wood. And my biggest piece is six inches by six inches, right? So uh, like a one by seven piece of material would, uh, would, would do just fine. So um, if I go uh let's go 13 inches in length and let's go seven and a quarter inches wide by um and again this is up to you whether you use half inch material or three quarter inch sometimes three quarter inch can be a little bulky looking right uh you know a half inch should give a nice little uh, delicate look and things so I think I personally am going to uh, lay this out as a half inch piece of material uh, but if you have a one by uh, you know uh, one by eight which is a seven and a quarter inch board that's three quarter inches and you don't you're like man I don't know I don't want to mill this down or plane this down you know and and lose that quarter inch material then just make it out of three quarter inch material right uh, whatever you want to do uh, I uh, plane and mill my own lumber from rough stock anyway, so I would probably uh, uh, run this through a planer or I would resaw it down uh, with my bandsaw or something. All right, so the, let's start with the basics here. Uh, we're going to start with our rectangle tool and we're going to shoot, uh, create a rectangle that is six by six. Six by six. And click uh, nice square corners. If you wanted radius corners, you could you know right but I'm gonna go square because the napkins are square so we're gonna go apply on that <clears throat> and uh, from here uh, we can use our guidelines right we can use our guidelines if we want uh, to help us lay things out so I'm gonna pull down a guideline and snap to the center of this and um, I'm going to uh, I actually snap to the center of my board so let me get my rectangle center uh, or else I'm gonna be off let me get it centered there and we might as well move it over a little bit while we're here okay uh, so with that centered I'm going to create if I right click on the guideline I can open up the guideline property tools and I want to create a parallel guideline and for this uh, we're going to go three quarters of an inch relative to that center line in the positive direction and then we're gonna go three quarters of an inch negative relative to that in the negative direction so here's my guidelines here and everything and again what this guideline is for is to help me with my arc right with my arc and so 
my arc is going to come uh, and snap to uh, these two guides and then it's going to pull out uh, three-eighths of an inch and um, on that direction that radius right that radius uh, you know we're going to go uh, 0.1875 it not gonna let me let's set the radius over here point one eight seven five where did that one go to what in the world Lord of mercy let's create the arc first boom now that it's created let's go in here and uh, uh, tighten her up now the height uh, I'm just gonna go height instead of radius so let's go in here and uh, I just want this to be three eighths and click apply and oh that should have been a negative number there we go and uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. let's go ahead and do the same thing over here one more time arc tool we're going to uh, snap to uh, this point and come down I'm gonna bring my line down and snap to here pull this out and come over here and make my adjustment 0.375 this will be in the positive direction okay uh, this will be in the positive direction over here as well uh, with that being done I really do not need my guidelines uh, so I'm going to delete that guide by right clicking on it and this one as well let's get rid of those I'll keep my center line there because I'm ready to draw my circle now that the circle is just going to literally snap on this edge here and it's going to be the diameter or, uh, of the um, dowel <laughs> I almost forgot what the what I was supposed to call it dowel so 0.25 and if I hit D for diameter that'll create that diameter there um uh, awesome blossom okay uh so now we need to blend all this together now with uh with the uh the uh sketch up you know you click on the line and you you uh delete it well here we've got to do some trimming right we got to do some trimming so we're going to come in here and we're going to trim away this line the middle line and this line we're going to trim away this middle this and there is our profile and pocket cut areas for our base all right cool beans okay now let's go ahead and create our uh, rectangle um, if you uh, needed to know uh, if you wanted to draw freehand and you needed to know what your size was you just you know you we could take a measurement here with the measure tool and we could measure as soon as it opens there we go uh, we could measure that horizontal measurement from you know this point to this point and of course it should be six and three quarters if I did everything right there you go uh, and uh, it's gonna be by an inch and a half which is uh, this uh, vertical measurement which is the width of here to here um, that inch and a half and so that's what our rectangle would be if we were freehand drawing it uh, if you didn't want to freehand draw it you wanted to just kind of uh, steal from this uh, we could throw this into uh, if we select it all holding your shift key down we could throw this into transform mode and we could hold our control key down and we could pull over a copy if we wanted to uh, I'm gonna be turning this uh, 90 degrees so both parts can get cut out of here but you know now that I have this copy I could use this copy and work off of uh, if I were to work off of it well one of the things that's gonna happen is same way we almost same way we drew it in the uh, SketchUp software we're gonna draw our lines over here and snap to that point and then we're going to use our trim trim tool trim where's my trim tool and we're gonna trim away that and that all right now that I have this part here uh, I still haven't put my circle or anything in there but I, what I want to do before I do that is I want to go ahead and I'm gonna group it together 
So select it, I can hit the letter G on my keyboard for group or I can use the group tool over here and edit objects, either one. But I wanna group this together and then I wanna rotate it using the rotate tool under the transform objects menu off its center. I wanna go 90 degrees. Awesome blossom. All right, so let's get this uh, moved over a little bit. All right, now for my circle, right, for my circle. Uh, I do want to make sure, you know, in case I moved it, it should be exactly centered. But just in case, going to the alignment tool and up and down on my material, I want to make sure it's centered, and it is. So uh, now I know when I draw my circle uh, in here, uh, I'm going to, you know, be centered on this uh, part. Um, if I wasn't, I could, I'll show you how we can adjust that. So what I want to do is now I'm just, it's kind of an eyeball thing. You know, what looks good as far as that center medallion, let's call it. Uh, and for me, I'm going to go two and a quarter inches in diameter. Uh, if I do my math right, 2.25, enter. Yeah, that looks good. All right, uh, once again, once we have that, uh, to make sure it's centered on this piece here, uh, we could select our circle first and then our part last. We could open up the alignment tool and we're actually aligning to the selection now, which is the last item we select, and we could click that middle center button and we can make sure it's centered. It didn't move, so it is centered. Uh, we're gonna use our trim tool and let's do some cleanup. So uh, I cannot trim a grouped object, right? So let's go ahead and ungroup it. The letter U for ungroup, uh, or I could use the ungroup tool over here. So now that it's ungrouped, we can trim away, trim away, trim away to create our part. All right, super, super simple uh, uh, as far as creating the two profiles that we need. Uh, let's go ahead and delete that guideline. The two profiles that we need for our parts and they can be cut out of a small piece of wood and uh, be something very cool. Now this uh, is uh, up to uh, you know, um, uh, up to uh, whatever you wanna do. I'm gonna do just a nice decorative V carving in here uh, and we can also look at a 3D model. Uh, the first thing that I wanna do is uh, I want to um, make sure that, uh, because I want my my V carve to kind of have a, uh, oh, what am I trying to say? Uh, a nice little uh, border around it of sorts. So I'm gonna go into my circle tool and I'm gonna snap to the center and I'm just gonna snap out to this edge just for a reference circle because I'm gonna be deleting it here in two seconds when I use the offset tool. I wanna offset off of that selected circle that I just drew inward and I want to go, uh, let's see here, let's go 0.3 inches. Deleting the original, selecting the new. There you go. Yeah, that'll be perfect. All right, that's going to be kind of my drawing area now. I'm going to have a nice little ring around here, and then I can do whatever I want in here. Um, now, this is, uh, you know, if I was looking at this, uh, this would be kind of like looking from side to side. My, my drawing, this is my top and this is my bottom over here. So uh, once I draw, I'm gonna draw this out the way I wanna see it and then I'm gonna end up rotating it, that drawing 90 degrees before I carve it because I want, uh, you know, when they've got that napkin holder, I want the dowels on the side and I want that image or whatever it is to be, you know, uh, facing the most the, the proper position but since my part is sideways right 90 degrees sideways uh, for fitting on the board I, I just got to remember to rotate my drawing but I don't want to have to turn my head to the left or right to draw sideways so I'm just gonna draw it out and then I'll rotate everything 90 degrees um, and uh, hey welcome Carmen good to see you in here um, all right so let's go in and uh, Let's look and see what I've got for some graphics, uh, for some uh, tracing and some V carving and stuff. Uh, so I've got uh, in here, I've got some horses and all that wonderful stuff. 
Uh, but let's go to my downloads um, and let's see what I've got. Uh, actually, not my downloads, my pictures. Pictures, camera roll, um, clip art. Awesome. All right, now. Uh, here's where I have to decide do I want some kind of animal carving do I want some kind of flourish do I want some kind of uh, whatever well I want to stick to stage to the theme of the country kitchen right so uh, maybe something uh, like this deer or uh, like this fish or uh, it could be just something nice and floral and everything uh, you know even the grapes right grapes uh, for the kitchen um, let's see what I've got here moose well moose don't really fit I'm gonna <laughs> dance in turkey all right let's go with let's go with this bass uh, do I like that bass I do like that bass let's go with the bass or the deer let's go with the bass it's got a little bit more detail in it so let's open that image up yeah there you go nice little uh, bass card and uh, uh, with this um, if I wanted to I could create a new layer right so I'm not like trying to trace on top of my parts and all that stuff uh, I could create come up here and create a new layer uh, and I'll just call this my image layer keeping that in mind that that is different from my bitmap layer my bitmap layer is all is my actual picture my image layer is going to be my tracing. Okay, uh, so with that selected, let's go into the trace tool. That's under the create vectors menu, and um, let's turn the fading off so you guys and girls can see it. Right, and let's turn off the layer one so it gets rid of all that other stuff in the background. Um, so let's see here. Let's get this where it looks uh, I don't want to lose a lot of detail in the eye um, I don't want to have to do a lot of cleanup so let's go let's go full on right there very very poor pixelated image right uh, you always want to use a high quality image and for you guys and girls uh, Google is your best friend when searching for images uh, you you can filter those images out um, you can filter those images out uh, to anything over 800 by 600 pixels is uh, going to get a nice quality image and all this one is very pixelated but I'll still be able to get a decent tracing out of it so let's go ahead and preview that tracing uh, click apply and close that tool now that I've closed that tool I do not need the bitmap layer turned on anymore so I can turn it off and just have my tracing left behind so now that my tracing is here I'm ready to turn my layer one back on and let's get it into position now the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to center it uh, to make sure I'm exactly center if I select the bass first and my circle last I can go into the alignment tool and align to that last selection that circle and I can just center it in there uh, now that I'm centered in there, I know I have a two inch outer diameter circle and I offset inward about 0.3. Uh, so I need to size this uh, bass down. And so let's go ahead and just throw it in transform mode. I'm going to hold my shift key so it stays centered. And if I grab one of these corner boxes, I can go ahead and get it in position. Now again, guys and girls, you can make this anything that you want in the center here I'm just using I'm trying to stay with that country theme uh, all right with that uh, that looks like a decent size in here and now I want to go ahead and rotate it off its center click this center dot over here and I want to go 90 degrees okay excellent all right and so uh, now that uh, uh, let's see it, it should have kept me centered yeah it did okay just wanted to double always double check 
All right, so now with this, I have two things that I can do with this fish. I'm gonna go over to the uh, toolpath area because we're ready to create that. One, I can carve it, V-carve it in, or two, I can pocket around it, giving it kind of a raised look and uh, still have the V-carve for the detail and everything, but give it a little bit of a raised look, three-dimensional, you know, if I wanted to. Uh, let's look at it both ways. So the first way we're gonna do it is we're going to V-carve this. So with our V-carve toolpath, because I have some major wide areas here, I am absolutely going to use a flat depth. Uh, if I tried to V-carve this, it would cut absolutely through my three-quarter inch piece of material. And so, um, I definitely want to have a flat depth on this and I I'm I think for me a shallower flat depth just kind of gives a, a better look rather than a deeper flat depth so uh, I'm just gonna go uh, my maximum I usually is like a 0.15 it's kind of my magic number with a V bit but uh, it's either gonna be an eighth of an inch or 0.15 and so I'll go with the 0.15 depth using my 60 degree V-bit. And I do have, personally, a small eighth inch end mill. And that's what I wanna use for the flat areas. Um, and um, so I am gonna use a flat area clearance tool. Now you don't have to. Uh, it's just gonna mean a little bit longer run time and things. And it's not gonna be exactly as uh, smooth on the bottom of that carving as one would like. Uh, you'll have a few tool marks from that V-bit. But uh, if you have the opportunity and you don't have an eighth inch end mill in your arsenal of tools, uh, highly, highly recommend that you get one. Um, and uh, uh, because they come in useful a lot. And so with that, uh, let's go ahead and calculate that. This is just gonna be the simple V carving. Let's uh, calculate that uh, out. Okay. Nice little carving. Now my eighth inch tool was way too big, right? Uh, let's move over so you can see it. My eighth inch tool was too big to fit into a lot of these areas. You can actually see this clearing right here. Uh, this clearing is um, where my eighth inch bit uh, could fit, these two clearing alls. But if you notice these uh, marks here, it's my V bit actually had to do a lot of cleaning up. Now for me, I, I have a choice. Uh, do I want to just let the V-bit do the whole thing and not even worry about the waste of time of changing to the eighth inch end mill since it's only going to do those two spots? Or do I uh, want to change to a smaller diameter end mill like my 16th inch end mill? If I changed to my 16th inch end mill, and I recalculated this tool path, let's take a look at what that 16 inch end mill could clean up. Let's see. Uh, so it can fit into a lot more areas, but um, you know, again, it's really coming down to, do I want to just let the V-bit do it and uh, not worry about the tool change because I'm going to just, yeah, yeah. I'm going to take the flat depth out of there. I'll just let the V-bit do it. So we'll calculate that one more time. Reset uh, this preview and preview those uh, tool paths. And I'll just let the V-bit kind of flatten those areas out. The V-bit actually does a very decent job of creating flat areas, but it's gonna main for just a little bit longer run time. Now this is a very small piece, less than two inches. Uh, and so uh, it's not gonna be that much of a, uh, of a bother for me as far as the, the letting the V-car, the V-bit just do it. All right, with that, let's go ahead and let's create our uh, profile cuts. Or let's do our pockets first, uh, our drilling operations, should I say. This here and I'm actually gonna do these two first. I will save all of them together as one toolpath, but these aren't gonna go all the way through. The This part over here, they will go through, but on my napkin holder, I'm just gonna carve them uh, about a quarter inch deep, just enough to kind of glue them in. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill these uh, quarter inch holes with my quarter inch end mill a uh, quarter inch deep. Uh, got the trifecta there. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, this is gonna be my base holes. Okay. And then uh, let's go ahead and grab these two guys. Again, this is gonna be a drilling operation. Uh, we're gonna go this time half inch all the way through the material and uh, same bit calculate that and then we're gonna do our two profile cuts <clears throat> now we'll talk about this circle here in a moment uh, uh, and we'll put that pull tool path into position I want to do it last because I want to talk to you about uh, what we can do the two options that we have to utilize it but let's go ahead and create our profile cuts for our profile cutout. Uh, this is going to cut all the way through the material. Uh, it's going to go uh, with a quarter inch end mill. I'm going to be on the outside of the line here. And I'm going to uh, add some tabs. Tabs are uh, necessary uh, depending on our clamping methods uh, to hold our parts into place. And I don't need a big tab here for this half inch piece of material, so I'm just going to go with a 16th inch tab. Um, now on this tab, uh, on the rectangle, I'm just going to do four spots here and here. And on this part here, I'm going to try to stay in the straight areas. I don't want to have to put tabs on my circle and then have to sand them or anything. I'm going to just stay in the straight areas here. And I'm just going to do those little tabs right there. Now if you want to be overly you know, uh, secure, you can add tabs all over this place wherever you want but these are going to be just enough to hold these parts in and let's go ahead this is going to be our outer profile and I am using a quarter inch end mill did I spell otter or outer? O-U-T-T-E-R? <laughs> somebody correct me if I'm wrong <laughs> alright so let's uh, let's preview that toolpath you know, so you can see our tabs there. Nice uh, little tabs, nice little part. Now, let's uh, let's go back and let's talk about this circle. So two things I can do. One, I can do just a very simple profile cut with my uh, V-bit to about an eighth of an inch deep. I kind of, when I do a profile cut on the line with my V-bit, eighth of an inch is about the maximum I go uh, with my 60 degree V-bit. And uh, let's grab the uh, 1541 oh so many tools there we go and I want to be on the line I want to be on the line when I'm cutting this and this is just going to be my uh, border cut and it's going to be the 60 DEG V bit down here at the bottom is where I'm typing uh, for the name of this tool patch just giving it a name so I can identify it uh, now with that um, that's just going to create a nice little border cut you know around and, and everything uh, now this of course would not be the last toolpath we want to move it up in the list and I'm gonna move it up by the V carve because that that both of those would be run at the same time and so if we were to look at this uh, we have a super simple very very customizable um, you know uh, napkin holder uh, and so let's give it a little bit of a fill color uh, whatever you know whatever color you would if you wanted to paint it you don't have to keep it natural but now let's talk about let's give this a little bit of a raised effect and let's kind of pocket all this stuff down and give this bass a little bit of a raising you know a raising right so let's reset this preview and then this is gonna be the last thing we do for this project and we're gonna move on outer thank you so much let's go in real quick uh, someone um, gave me a correct spelling outer o-u-t-e-r uh, perfect way to go all right now for this bass in order to keep that uh, to maintain that kind of v carve uh, detail um, and give it the raised effect I need to create a boundary around my vectors and uh, that boundary uh, I basically want to kind of outline them so they all have that kind of raised effect and uh, for it's basically like we're going to be creating an island so let's 
come back over here to our offset tool on the left side of the, oh I got the hiccup sorry guys on the outside uh, the uh, left side of the software and I want uh, a very simple uh, let's go a sixteenth of an inch and let's see what that creates for me uh, I want to select the new and offset outward and that my friends will work for me now all I care about with this offset is this vector this outside vector so I'm gonna hold my shift key down this is the reason why I chose select new over here so it selects the new vectors that it drew and um, I am uh, going to hold my shift key down I'm gonna turn that outside vector off uh, and even uh, this guy here I'm gonna kind of turn that one off as well and then everything else that's still selected I'm gonna hit the delete key and delete it I don't want those offsets in there and now if I go over and create my V carve toolpath I'm going to select all of this inner stuff here, all the boundaries and the fish and, and the border on the outside. And I'm going to go very shallow with this, uh, 0.15 or 0.125 uh, for this. And um, we'll stick at the 0.15 for right now. We'll stick there. And on this one, I'm definitely going to use a flat depth. And I will use my eighth inch flat depth for this. Uh, to get into the areas as tightly as possible so my v-bit does not have to do a lot of work um, and so zero start depth 0.15 cut depth 60 degree v-bit eighth inch end mill uh, this is going to be my raised design I'm just typing raised in there for right now and let's go ahead and take a look at the so let's grab that one that one our uh, base holes drilling operation and our profile cut and preview all the visible tool paths let's turn the color off And let's look at this now some some may want all those fat areas and everything carved up in just the detail just the detail of the bass uh, you know carved in V carved in versus you know those pockets and stuff we can reverse that cut if we'd like um, I would probably me personally would probably leave it like this but I want you guys to know how to do these things so if we come in and we actually delete not delete but just deselect uh, and I'm gonna create a second pro uh, V carve just so it's different if I deselect those new vectors that I drew and calculate this same tool path if I reset this preview and preview those visible tool paths again all right let's get into kind of a top view here and let's uh, hold down the control key and let's tilt this a little bit Oh, can I rotate around? Bear with me a second while I orbit myself around. So for the fish, you know, some may like this, you know, better than the, uh, you know, the other look, the other one being carved. They might want more body, right? They might want more body around here. Uh, in things and if I were to uh, color this in uh, you know it would look you know something like that so either or um, me personally this is a very simple napkin holder I would probably not do uh, the 
uh, raised effect unless I did a shallow cut. Uh, talking super shallow, it would more like be uh, an eighth inch, eighth of an inch or less. And I'm going to go a sixteenth of an inch, very shallow cut. And if I calculate this tool path uh, and I reset it once again, pre re previewing all of these, I if I were doing this reversed effect or, or even doing this raised effect, um, preview the visible tool pass, I would go real shallow just so it just uh, not really deep, just, just something to accent the cut, you know, um, let it finish carving out and then let that color pop back in. You know, I would go with just a very shallow pocket, you know, sixteenth of an inch or something for me if I was going to do the raised effect. But anyway, this center area is yours to do whatever you want with, right? For this particular type of project, customize it any way you want. So there you go, a very simple napkin holder, uh, great for picnics, great for selling, uh, you know, uh, crafts, uh, shows, and events and things for uh, those country kitchens. You can customize it. Uh, for cafes and restaurants, uh, for their tables, if it's a little diner type cafe that uses napkins versus you know cloths and all that stuff, so many things, that, so many places you could take that one very simple little design. Any questions on that before we move on? Any questions on this before we move on? Is uh, I, I see a couple of people are saying they're having some some issues as freezing and all. Uh, is everything going well? Oh yeah. What about uh, William? 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 Scott? Williams? Awesome. William says, "Hey, what about the 3D model, Laney? You said 3D model. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, turn off our image layer uh, and um, get that turned off. And let's talk about what if we did a 3D model in here. So let's." Uh, quickly go into uh, our clip art right and in the clip art uh, let's go with an animal and let's see here I think I got a rooster don't don't we have a rooster or a pig yeah we got a rooster right country kitchen so we're gonna go with a rooster um, now I'm not gonna do the rooster in the little cove the little bowl I'm just gonna do the plain old rooster here and we're gonna drop him in Woohoo, cock a doodle doo. Uh, oh, uh, let me undo that. Um, oops. Let me undo that rooster just for a moment. Just for a moment. So I can turn that layer off and create a new layer. I had that I had that layer active, and this is gonna be my 3D model layer. Okay. Now uh, we'll keep make that active by clicking on making sure it's bold, right? Uh, now we can drop that rooster in. So, cock a doodle doo. All right. Uh, so once again, I'm going to size him down. Uh, but before I size him, I want to get him centered. Make sure he's centered in there. That way, I can hold my shift key when I'm sizing and just keep it centered. So, if I select him, hold down my shift key and select my circle. I can go into my drawing tools, open up that alignment tool, and center him up. All right, so he's good to go now. And now I'm going to select on him and hold down my shift key so when I scale him, he's going to remain centered. All right. Uh, so with him in there, let's go ahead and rotate him 90 degrees, not flip or mirror. We want to rotate off of his center 90 degrees. Nicely done. And uh, we actually have some nice place in here if we wanted to do some text or something as well. Uh, and also... I'm not going to do text. I'm just going to do the 3D model. So I'm going to make it just a little bit bigger. Not much. 
All right, excellent. Uh, so now if I go into the modeling tools over here on my rooster, let me look at the, the properties. That's this black wrench icon. And let's look at the properties. So right now my rooster has a shape height. Uh, the Z height of that model is 0.2285. Now keep in mind my whole part is a half inch so we definitely want to be less than that and I'm only going a little less than halfway down right for uh, that. Um, if we go look at our 3D view on our rooster here he's got a lot of uh, wonderful detail. Let's kind of uh, zoom in on him. He's got a lot of nice feathers and detail and things and uh, if I were to reduce his height, let's say I wanted to reduce his shape height to, oh, an eighth of an inch. Too many decimal points. Let's get those decimals correct. Uh, it's going to reduce that Z height, but I'm going to lose you know, some detail and things. Uh, how much detail do I want to lose? Um, you know, That just depends on how deep and all I want to go. Uh, I'm going to reset that height with this button here. And for me, uh, 0.2285 is not too bad. I won't have that. Won't be too bad of a pocket and everything in there. Uh, so uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's create him. Now for this, for this, I have two options. One, just carve the model within this circle, or literally mill all of this surface area away so the rooster is raised up you know standing kind of on top of this holder and if I did that then I would reduce the height a little bit because I still want my piece to have a little bit of beef to it to be my my paper weight I guess you would say in a sense uh, whatever it may be now the weight really doesn't apply you know it's when you push it down on those dowels it's gonna stay pretty much where you set it And um, let's see here. Which way? Let's do it both ways so you can see uh, how we do this. So let's create our toolpath uh, first with this uh, inside vector being the boundary. So select our model on the inside vector. And um, uh, let's take a pause for a second. And. Rochelle, how do I eliminate the holes uh, in the body of the trout? Uh, was it the fish that we were just doing, or are you talking about a different trout? Uh, the fish that we were doing, if that was a trout, uh, I thought it was a bass, but it could be a trout. Um, uh, how do you eliminate the holes in the bottom of it? You One of two things, you delete those vectors uh, to, to remove them, or you create a pocket, a flat depth, so it doesn't cut all the way through. Or you deselect them, in the holes and everything. Um, let me know if you're talking about the particular fish we were using. Uh, yeah. So Howard, uh, it would uh, the the 3D would uh, be a little bit better on a three quarter inch piece uh, because then I could mill it down and, and and I could have a shape height of whatever I want, and then my finished piece would I could still have it down to that half inch thickness. You know what I mean? because <laughs> it would be the first quarter inch of that material getting carved away uh, either or uh, but yeah yeah you know if I wanted to cut it out of two separate pieces yeah or if I wanted to do the whole thing out of the three quarter inch piece absolutely um, let's go ahead and let's look at our uh, when he, whenever we're working with a model we want to look at our material setup and see where our model is positioned positioned and um, uh, the model sitting right at the top I am gonna reduce that a little bit. I'm gonna go a very small amount. 0 0.005, uh, just so I don't have any flat spots in my feathers. Put a little bit of meat above that model. The model's the light tan area in your drawing. Okay, uh, when I get done with this model, Rochelle, I'll go back to the fish and uh, see what your, uh, we'll remove those holes. Okay. So, 
with our material set up uh, proper now with the little meat there above our model we're gonna click OK and I don't want to recalculate the tool pass um, because this is a whole different type of project so I just want to create my 3d finish now I can definitely it's it's a quarter inch of material coming out of here so I am gonna do a little bit of a rough cut using a quarter inch end mill and I'm going to use the selected vector the selected vector this uh, circle here as the boundary and I'm going to uh, raster along the y-axis or the X whatever you want to always carve with the grain depending on which way your grain is going and so I'll go back to X and we'll calculate this all right let's reset the preview and let's preview uh, our outer profile our drilling operation and our base holes uh, preview all of these tool paths <laughs> not that uh, let's stop that we don't want to do that stop, stop. I click I, I most definitely had the pool pass I wanted to view selected but then went right back and hit preview all tool pass I want to preview the visible tool pass <laughs> the visible tool pass all right now that rough cut would be before the profile cut so we'll put it up here and uh, so this is the rough cut now let's go in and create the finished cut of the rooster and for this because of the detail and the feathers and all I'm actually going to use uh, a 16th inch end mill a 32nd inch end mill would be much much better as far as the detail in those feathers but I want to kind of stay with what you guys and girls have um, and uh, we're going to use a 16th inch end mill which is eluding me at the second uh, there we go and again we're going to use the selected vector as a boundary let's go side by side here uh, we're going to use the selected vector as a boundary and we're going to raster and we'll click calculate All right, let's uh, move this over and preview that finish cut. Let's get rid of the color. All right, now. my bum, 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 bum. I don't want this lip in here if I'm gonna do this I want it nice and clean I don't want this lip right here and so I want my ball nose bit uh, and the reason why it did that is because it is a tapered ball nose bit so it kind of offset that it didn't want to cut into this but I wouldn't mind if it cut into it a little bit so on that finish cut I'm gonna allow it to uh, offset or go beyond that boundary uh, by the diameter of the bit and uh, we're gonna calculate that one more time 3d finish cut is a ball nose end mill the 3d rough cut is a flat end mill rough cut uh, for hogging out the waste material and everything and uh, let's preview that selected toolpath And again, once again, we'll turn off that color. And so if we uh, maximize this here, we've got a nice, cool uh, three-dimensional carving, right, within this boundary. Well, what if I uh, 
what if I wanted to mill the whole thing down? Well then I would on that selected vector I would be using this border as the boundary. This outside border is the boundary. Uh, and um, I would come in and calculate that toolpath with that outside border as the boundary. And what that would do is uh, it would level everything out to the bottom of the model. And I would do this for both the rough and the finish cut. I'm just doing it for the finish to uh, simulate it. All right, and if we preview that selected vector, and so I could have you know that part just raised up, and now uh, that gives me a lot of area to do something. Um, uh, you know over here maybe some text kind of wrapping in this corner or something something really nice uh, some kind of something uh, you know uh, we could add another element uh, another model or something but whatever you know there's a lot of just open space or we could just leave it you know basic and simple right uh, however we want to do so we can either do it within the boundary or we can do the whole surface um, and all and then we have our very simple two parts now let's take a uh, quick moment let's turn this uh, model off model layer off here and let's come back into our image layer uh, Rochelle the holes in the uh, the trout are you talking about the water droplets all the way around the border or are you talking about um, if we were to reset this preview or are you referring to So are you referring to the water droplets or are you referring to like when you say holes are you referring to these uh, cavities that are getting v-carved that's the detail uh, let me know if you're referring to the droplets I'll show you how to remove those so uh, Dennis asks uh, you know raster versus offset uh, you know well an offset cut starts from a particular point in like a spiral goes around and around and around and around and um, a raster cuts back and forth so it's just a matter of uh, uh, how you you know what you want to do um, I personally recommend rastering a 3d model uh, because you're cutting with the grain and you're gonna get a much cleaner cut less sanding or touch up that you have to do if you're if you use the offset toolpath, then you're going with the grain against the grain, with the grain against the grain, with the grain against the grain. You know, and so there's going to be a little bit more cleanup on the back end. Um, but if I were doing, if this were a bowl, right, flat bottom bowl, uh, then I would uh, I would definitely use a raster toolpath, right? Uh, but uh, it's it you know if it was a pocket of some sort, uh, I would do a uh, offset toolpath but I generally <clears throat> always raster because you always want to carve with the grain right less cleanup less sanding and all uh, the holes in the fish body these are the uh, these are the V carved details you want to get rid of them and just have an, a silhouette of a fish is that what you're saying you just want a silhouette of a fish no scales fins gills any of that stuff Rochelle 
in the belly of the fish you want to get rid of this big vector right here so uh, you would just come in and we would ungroup that vector oops always make sure that you're working in your active layer we would ungroup that and you would come in and delete the vectors that you you know don't want um, and if we were to recalculate uh, this toolpath you just delete the vectors that you don't want and so let's uh, we've got our profile cut drill base preview visible tool pass all right bear with me a second I want to reverse that what vector did I have? oh I had the I had the outside border selected let me turn that off let me open that back up had the outside border selected I don't want that selected and click calculate reset that preview and one more time let's go outer profile our drill our base holes preview that And so, you know, by removing that middle vector, it, uh, it, it, it creates that, you know, that whole raised effect. Now, um, just in the belly, is this what you're referring to? Because is, that was the only major, I mean, other than around the gills and the mouth and all, I don't see any holes other than that. Was that what uh, you were referring to, uh, Rochelle? Did I get the right vector? Let me know, Rochelle, if I got the right vector. Um, all right, let's see here what we have. How do I uh, 3D the fish we are doing? Let's see here, notice that. Yeah, Howard, uh, end mill or ball nose? Uh, end mill uh, for your rough cut, ball nose for your 3D finishes. Always use a ball nose for your 3D finish. And again, it all depends on the detail where you need to get if your eighth inch bit diameter is too big it's not going to get into those areas uh, and you're going to have less detail uh, 16th inch may get into them a little bit better uh, the 32nd will you know very nice fine tip uh, ball nose uh, we'll get into those details and all uh, was that was that good okay okay Rochelle good uh, yeah you just go in there you ungroup it if it's a group together and then you just click on the vectors you want to remove and delete and you delete them okay all right guys I think we spent enough time on the napkin holder right super simple project something you can knock out bunches of and sell them sell 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 make that money and you can customize them in so many ways this thing could have you know with this very simple body style here you can have so many different things in this in this area so many different things uh, just oh gosh you know and you can change the style what if what if uh, you wanted to be cutesy right what if you want to be cutesy and what if you wanted <laughs> alright let's uh, turn this layer off let me do this real quick and then I'm done with this uh, um, uh, new layer alright we will take and delete this we will draw a line from here to here spacebar to finish draw a line from here to here spacebar to finish scissor tool to trim select uh, these vectors 
and join them together. They're already joined, wonderful. Um, and now let's uh, really quick, bear with me while I do this. I'm gonna, I can't draw one by freehand because I'm not that good. Uh, but let's go in and grab, uh, I think it's in my colored clip art, colored clip art. All right, let's uh, take this guy here. Let's, um, he's on a new layer. Good, uh, so trace, turn off the fading, pull this here and click apply. Our preview, apply and close. Turn that bitmap layer off. Take this heart and rotate it 90 degrees on its center. Select my outside boundary here with my heart being selected first and open up the alignment tool and center to that. Take my scissor tool and trim. Oops, am I grouped together? Let me see, I think I'm grouped together. I shouldn't be grouped together. I'm grouped on the heart. Let's ungroup the heart. There we go. And one more time. Trim, 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 trim. And let's create our profile toolpath, a new profile toolpath on these guys. Oops, where'd I go with that? I was just taking my whole uh, screen. Um, shift key all right profile cut cutting all the way through my material uh, with a quarter inch end mill quarter inch end mill outside of the line uh, we'll add some tabs in there Oh, let's try to stay on this. I didn't even size that, that heart. I could have sized it down a little bit better, but okay. Uh, calculate that. Reset this preview and choose that profile. Uh, the drill in the base holes. Preview the visible tool pass. Okay, that's the base. Don't worry, we're gonna get some detail in there. Um, we're going to offset. I should have done the offset before I deleted my lines, but that's okay. We'll offset in a quarter, 0.3. Let's go 0.3 again. Oops, I went outward. Let's go inward, inward, junior, inward. And uh, let's not do that. Let's. Let's do that. I just did a bunch of undos. Control Z. Undo, undo, undo. Let's go inward. There we go. Now I'm going to use my trim tool and let's trim away. Trim away, trim away, trim away, trim away. All right. So, um, it. one more time. Undo. Got to love Control Z. Because I want sharp corners. I want that sharp point uh, when I come in inward. Offset inward. And uh, I want to just get that. It's not very much of a sharp point, but that's because... That point's not sharp. If that point was sharp, then my other one would be. All right, that's fine. We'll leave that there. Okay, one more time. Trim. Trim, trim, trim. Okay. 
Now I have a boundary that I can uh, do a profile cut with a V-bit. Uh, like I said, I like to go an eighth of an inch when I'm using my V-bit as a profile uh, for a border. That's kind of my depth. And um, I'm going to be on the line with this one. We're going to calculate this toolpath and preview that cut. I do want a sharp point right there. I don't like that rounded point there. So, ah, gosh almighty. Let's, um, all right, how do we fix this? Well, what we do is we go into node editing here and we're going to take this guy right here and we're going to cut the vector. This one right here, we're going to cut the vector and we're going to uh, delete this point right here. And I can use my extend tool uh, to, if I click on this line first and over here, I can create that sharp point. Okay, get that nice point in there. Now, I wanna do the same thing down here. See, I got a blunt object there, right? Well, with this one, in node editing, I'm just going to right click and delete this span, that line. And now I can go to my extend tool. And once again, come over here and extend that out. Now that I have a nice clean sharp circle, when I offset this, or sharp point, when I offset this and I tell it to use sharp edges to create sharp points, and I offset, I should get that point there. And point three is just too much. Uh, let's go point two. There we go. All right. And for the final time, I'm not trimming this again. <laughs> All right. Let's get that, that, and that. Okay. With that being said, I can recalculate this uh, toolpath here. Reset my preview. Let's go with our profile cut drill and drill base and preview the visible tool pass. So number one, this is turn the color off. So a very simple V cut heart, right? Or I could do a pocket. Select this. Um, and do a pocket tool path and I only going to go a very small amount 16th of an inch with my quarter inch end mill and preview those I could pocket it out Hell, I could do the raised effect if I wanted to uh, by selecting the outside border and the inside border of the heart and have the heart raised up. But, you know what I mean? You know, so the, this, this, this top holder can be any shape you want it. It can, you know, uh, it can be any, you know, way you want it to look. Um, however you want it to, you know, to go. Um, the you know it's really uh, up to you now in this case I would have to use a smaller end mill because I only offset point two uh, so I would have to use an eighth inch end mill to cut this and if I select that that um, drill operation and base holes I had to remember which one to select you know I could throw an I love you in there or I love my kitchen I love cooking I love whatever the case may be uh, on this pocket I would actually probably go a little bit deeper uh, we'll go 0.15 with it I don't have to reset the preview this time And so you could have kind of that raised heart. Now notice the little fibers sticking up on this around the edges. Uh, that's just uh, scrap material. So 
what I would do is in this uh, pocket cut is I would probably uh, uh, do an allowance of ten thousandths of an inch or so and did I go inward I think I went inward how can you tell look at your solid view and I went ten thousandths of an inch inward I want to go outward so it's a negative negative negatory negative and that will clean up my edges there and stuff so we could have kind of a you know that raise effect again so many possibilities uh, you know on this very simple cool little napkin holder okay 845 guys we've got to move on beyond this all right so layer three is going to be our countertop holder and let's turn off all of our other layers all right uh, when would you use uh, a straight ball nose versus a tapered well um, uh, just like uh, 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 Doug said, you know, anywhere you use a straight bit, uh, you know, uh, the ball nose uh, is, uh, you can use it anywhere you would use a straight bit typically. Uh, but uh, the ball nose is going to create the kind of that rounded edge, that straight edge, and then the little rounded, you know, radius at the bottom of the cut around the perimeter. Um, but a uh, straight ball nose can be used with your 3D cuts. It can be used uh, with pocket cuts, profile cuts. Um, it all depends. Uh, you know, the tapered ball nose. What it's what, what the purpose for the tapered ball nose is. The tapered ball nose has the ability to get into deeper crevices and and and, and cuts and things, and it eliminates the tool mark areas uh, that a straight bit would leave. You know, a straight bit, bit, you know, getting down into deep areas would generally leave tool marks on the side walls of the cut. A uh, tapered bit uh, eliminates those. Uh, so there's a purpose for, you know, you can use a straight bit, but there is a purpose for, a, you know, having the tapered as well. It serves a purpose. Um, okay. Now, for a very simple, <clears throat> for a very simplistic uh, holder, uh, we're going to have a um, let's get rid of this and I'm actually not going to use uh, SketchUp for this this can all be done in here so with a simple holder a typical roll of paper towels has a diameter of about five and a half inches uh, to six inches unless you get the bounty extra roll or something like that uh, you know it typically has about a five or six inch diameter so you would you would size your base accordingly um, and for me I'm gonna go with a uh, six inch diameter base here circle and let's get it centered up uh, on our board for right now and uh, excuse me for a moment <clears throat> All right, so we would have um, in the center of our circle, we'd have a place. Now with this one, we're going, this is gonna be a countertop standing piece. And so we're gonna use a one inch dowel rod, one inch by 13 inches. Okay, oops, this needs to be one. One inch by 13 inches and uh, uh, dowel stock. Um, the, uh, um, 13 inches a typical roll of paper towels is around 11 inches in length uh, in its length and all uh, and so I want I want a couple of inches of material uh, sticking out of this uh, piece uh, for a particular reason um, if I were to simulate this in kind of a 2d view uh, I'm going to have a base 
I'm going to have a center post and I'm going to have a small napkin break here um, and uh, this is version one okay with the napkin break we'd have a kind of a teardrop shaped base probably uh, but if I wasn't using the napkin break uh, and I have just the base and the post of course get yourself all centered up and uh, aligned up oh not that way that way um, with this there's going to be a hole drilled in the top of the dowel however wide you want it to be I'm just going to use a small hole there and I'm going to have a, another shape Uh, let's let's see what I got for silhouettes let's let's see what I have for silhouettes here uh, let's go back to my black and white clip art We got a moose. We got a doe. We got this big old deer. Now, if if I do the deer, then it's gonna have a. Uh, it's gonna have to. Um, it's gonna. Have, we're gonna have to have a small bit. All right. So we'll do this. We'll do this guy right here. Okay. So I'm gonna trace this out real quick. The heart would have been a good one too. Uh, the heart would have been a good one too and uh, you can see that heart popping up on me that's because it's on the same bitmap layer now with this small little hole at the top and this is going to be sized down appropriately Now, this little bell, rooster, horse, bell, uh, heart, whatever you want it to be, um, it's going to be uh, connected to this top of this post um, with a, and I would typically, uh, generally to give myself a nice edge, I would typically... round off the top of my um, but it's going to be connected with a leather strap or some kind of you know uh, some kind of decorative nice piece you know not not a string or something um, it's going to be connected and when that paper towel roll uh, is uh, put on placed on uh, this lays on the outside of the roll keeping the paper towels from just flopping around and unfolding and keeps a nice firm uh, if you guys want to see a um, finished image of this Stand by one second. Let me see if they uh, show one of these. Um, stand by. I don't want to waste a lot of time on this one. This is a very simple one trick pony, but let me see if they've. Wooden paper towel holder. Uh, 
Oh, come on. I know there's one. Sorry, guys. Bear with me a second. Uh, it's a pretty popular... There we go. All right. Uh, let's move this over onto the screen. This is not my image. Uh, this is from... Uh, um, uh, Rusticity. Very cute little design. Right? And so, uh, the... Uh, the little weight uh, holds the rolls. Hold your roll. Slow your roll. <laughs> but it holds the rolls uh, from flapping out. And it, that and this little uh, medallion here can be anything. You know, it could be anything. Horse, uh, animal, flower, you know, just anything. But it's a nice little, very simple, clean, uh, clean uh, countertop paper towel holder you know type situation uh, now the holder that we're going to do uh, is going to have a uh, different shape base uh, and it's going to have a paper break but here this is the one this is just a very simple design and so with this we would have our base profile and pocket cut the inner circle and then whatever out of our piece of material, whatever shape our medallion is going to be, you know, whatever item. And man, you can mix it up. They can buy add-ons, right? They can buy different medallions for different holidays. Maybe some, uh, maybe a Christmas tree for Christmas, a uh, pumpkin for Thanksgiving, uh, you know, heart for Valentine's Day, whatever, right? They can change it up, whatever their mood fits. Uh, you know, uh, you can have, they can buy extra medallions, uh, to hang on, you know what I mean? So all kinds of things. You can take this as far as you want. Now you would not have just a square base. Okay. You would have, you know, maybe a rounded edge, a round over edge, a chamfered edge of some sort, uh, just to kind of break up the squareness and everything. And if you have the Vetric Aspire, you, of course, you can kind of create your dome top. But what if you have VCar Pro uh, and things? Well, in the clip art tab of VCar Pro, they do have domes and dishes. Domes and dishes. And it would be a very subtle 30 degree dome. Uh, you could go with a more extreme, you know, 60, 45, 90, you know, whatever you want. Uh, but I'm just going to go with a very subtle 30 degree dome. I'm going to drag it over here. And I'm going to size it to the uh, size of my <coughs> circle. So let's go into the size tool and it's going to have a 6 uh, by 6 size there. And I'm going to get it centered, centered on my circle. So align okay um, and now I do not want my paper towels sitting on a dome I don't want my paper towels sitting on a dome I want them sitting on a flat surface but I'm using the dome I'm using the dome as just kind of a creating a nice subtle round over and so on this uh, let me turn off this other model so we're not looking at the rooster as well oh not that one the rooster uh, so I want a nice subtle round over but I want a flat top so I'm going to create an offset an offset of my outer circle I'm going to create that inward inward um, and I'm probably gonna go a good if this is six and a paper towel is around five and a half then I'm probably gonna go around that half of an inch offset not outward inward <laughs> inward all right now when I'm creating this tool path when I'm creating this tool path, this, this 3D finish cut, 
I'm going to be carving between these two vectors. I am going to let it uh, go beyond. I am going to let it go beyond the vectors a very small amount. Uh, I am going to use a large diameter ball nose, eighth inch, uh, you know, to make it faster. Quarter inch would be wonderful if you have one, but I'm going to use a uh, eighth in or a, uh, eighth inch ball nose, tapered ball nose for this, because it is a 3D cut. But I'm going to let it uh, overlap by a small amount. Uh, uh, that way it kind of goes beyond this. So I'm going to let it overlap those vectors. Let's go an eighth of an inch. And uh, I am going to do an offset for this. So Dennis, you were asking about offset versus straight. This is a ideal situation for an offset. I do not want to raster back and forth between these lines. I want to go in a circle round and around and around and around. Uh, so I would use an offset for this. And I'm going to calculate this toolpath. Okay, let's reset this preview to a blank board. Uh, let me go ahead and do a profile toolpath here so we can preview both of them together so you can kind of see where we're going with this. Uh, profile cut, cutting all the way through my material. This I would probably have a three quarter inch base uh, to give it some meat, but I am in a, in a half inch project, so I'm just gonna go half inch here. On the outside of the line using a quarter inch end mill. And I'm not going to do tabs on this for right now just so I can delete all the material around so we can see this cut. But I'm going to preview these two tool paths. Okay. And let me look at my uh, material setup at my model. It's still good, okay. Uh, just making sure. All right, so now, let me look at my model height. I just went, I just said, let me look at my, because uh, my model height shouldn't be that tall. Oh yeah, uh, it's going to be, let me reset my model height here. Um, Quarter of an inch. Oop, not 25 inches. And click apply. Close. Click OK. Uh, let me go back into that finish cut and recalculate it. And what we're going to end up doing is we're going to run a pocket cut to flatten off that top um, let's reset this preview let's get back into our 3d view here and let's reset this preview and let's preview um, the visible tool pass Sorry, I got quiet on you. Uh, it's because I'm, I'm not paying attention to myself. In my model, I want to give myself some base height. Let me look at, uh, there we go. 
Ask Mo like it. <clears throat> Had to get myself a quarter inch base height. Uh, it was uh, um, limiting itself. All right. Let's preview those visible toolpaths. That's more better. <laughs> I was like, what is that big old lip doing there? Um, more better, more better. Okay. So on this base, uh, I've got a nice flat plat uh, platform uh, for my uh, napkins to sit on. I got a nice rounded edge, and then of course we're gonna break the edge uh, with you know some sanding and all, just to kind of break it up a little bit. You know, on your finishing. Now, what if you wanted this to just transition from that curve right into a flat, and you didn't want this lip here? Well, all you do is just pocket this cut. Here in the middle, pocket cut with an end mill. Point three. Probably about an eighth of an inch. Is it an eighth? Am I wrong? Let's calculate this. Let's see if I went too deep. Um, I want to sneak up on it. Let's start with the sixteenth of an inch. I want to sneak up on it. Uh, and calculate that pocket. Sorry guys, um, just needed to uh, refresh myself. Okay, so if we preview that toolpath, okay, you get that nice flat that transitions ever so lightly into that uh, small curve. Uh, just all you're doing is you're creating a very simple base and then of course we're going to have our inside hole uh, this also is going to be a pocket cut uh, and this would generally probably be about a quarter of an inch uh, deep because it is going to most likely get screwed in from the bottom uh, i will use a quarter inch end mill for this Okay, and then of course you would cut out your medallions for whatever it may be and all you need is a one inch by 13 inch uh, piece of dowel uh, you could get decorative and uh, you know create a nice uh, top for it I usually just you know a round off edge is fine uh, you could get really creative as, as to what you do with the the tops and all but we have a nice just a very nice break on the edge to uh, create a nice little transition all right I think you guys get that that's pretty just basic right you get that that's pretty basic uh, we used a dome we uh, added some base to that dome uh, we used vectors to limit the cut so it only cut the rounded edges that nice little transition and then we pocketed the top off to give that nice flat transition and uh, we uh, have a a slew of different uh, objects and all we can create for our little medallion now <clears throat> Okay, for our second design, this one is going to have a paper break. 
this one, uh, your paper break could be a lot of different things. Uh, we could have a silhouette of something carved out. We could have a very simple dowel. We could have, um, you know, a, uh, a nice piece coming up. So we're going to start off with a very simple base. Uh, again, I'm going with a six inch diameter. This is going to have kind of a teardrop uh, type uh, look to it. So I want to Oh, what do I want to do here for the teardrop? I'm just going to go into node editing on this. And at this point here, I'm going to insert a point and insert a point. And I'm going to turn this into a Bezier curve and I'm going to delete this point because I want to kind of just pull these two points out. And I want to, oh, what do I want to do here? I want to smooth this curve. Is it going to let me smooth this curve? I do not want that, I do not want that, um, that little indention in there. So in node editing, I'm going to going to delete I inserted oh where'd you go needed to come back a little bit all right so let's pull this back out There we go. I did not want the little dip that the other points were creating me, so I moved back in my vector with creating the nodes. Um, we could refine this shape a little bit more. Uh, it doesn't have to be such a teardrop. Uh, let's go give ourselves, oops. Stand by. I got one little vector there that was screwing me up. All right. <clears throat> I think I'm actually going to insert a point back there on the center. That way I can adjust. create my base all right on this base we're gonna have a uh, paper break out here I'm gonna use a quarter inch dowel quarter inch by probably maybe five or six inches and um, I need to find the center of my six inch circle so right there and this is gonna be my one inch diameter uh, oops one inch not two inch pocket hole and um, on here the world is our oyster as far as uh, what we want to do so this is a very simple napkin holder with a paper break again a countertop uh, sitting piece we're going to um, this paper break right around this area here we can do lots of things. We can cut a silhouette. We can kind of square this off 
here and we can do a cutout of a silhouette of um, really anything and uh, I'll do a I'll do a set of grapes. So this is uh, version one, V1. And what we'll do is uh, we will copy this up here so we can see the uh, side by side. It would help if you hold your control key. All right, on version two, I'm going to take and create a line. I'm going to delete this. I'm going to trim this away. And let's grab those grapes that I saw in here earlier. All right, in the trace bitmap tool, we're going to um, trace these out. We're going to turn off that bitmap layer. We're going to ungroup that group and we're going to remove anything that we need. But we're also going to create an offset around it. We're going to create our offset. And our offset is going to be a good uh, quarter of an inch. A good quarter of an inch around. Oops. I went inward. We got to go outward. Whoa. Don't create sharp corners. Turn that off. Uh, quarter inch is too much. Let's go, let's cut that down in half. Mm. Still want to go less than that. Uh, let's go point. Oh. Eight. There we go. Nice little subtle offset there. On this offset, we have a length, a base. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna size my grapes up accordingly, of course. But I do want to take a measurement uh, to kind of see where I'm at as far as this base here. Uh, so I'm about two uh, two and three sixteenths. And so. Let's size these little bitty guys up some. Now on this, my height is important, uh, is what I'm kind of looking at when I'm looking at the size. So right now I'm about four inches tall, uh, which is, um, or five, uh, you know, five and three quarter inches tall which is fine, it's gonna come about three quarters up my napkin roll, uh, that's good. And at the bottom here, I need to draw a rectangle, and this rectangle is going to be three, or two and uh, three sixteenths inches long. And uh, same as my base, half inch wide. And I'm going to center it center it to that selection there. And I'm going to use my trim tool to trim away this, 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 and this. 
Okay. <clears throat> These two parts would be assembled together. You can very simply edge glue them. If you want to get fancy and kind of do some joinery or something, you can. But the back side of this and the front side of this are going to get edge glued together. Clean up your seams, make that seam disappear, and you know, go to town. So for this cut, we're going to do our profile cut or our pocket cuts first. How's that? We'll do our pocket cut, which is this guy right here. Quarter of an inch deep, quarter inch end mill, calculate. We're going to reset our preview back to a blank board. For our grapes here, we're going to V carve our grapes. They're going to be V carved, no flat depth. Uh, maybe a little flat depth. <laughs> maybe a little flat depth. Let's go with a flat depth and let's go. Um, an eighth of an inch. Okay. Um, I actually want the grapes, instead of them being carved away, I want them raised. Instead of the leaves being carved away, I want the veins to be carved away. So what we're going to do is we're going to, this is my profile here. Uh, I'm going to take my grapes once again, once again, and before I offset them, if you recall, I offset them a distance of 0.08. This time I'm just going to go a very small distance, uh, maybe a 0.04, uh, and offset uh, outward. Let me see if my uh, profile got all the way around. All right, it didn't get around these grapes, so 0.04 is a little light. Let's uh, a sixteenth of an inch. There we go. All right, for this, uh, I'm going to uh, turn off that border, delete all these other offsets, and now I'm going to select my grapes again with that V-carve toolpath and that outside border, and I'm gonna calculate it. What this is gonna do, why do we put that boundary around? Because that's going to give us that reversed effect. Uh, and so uh, when we carve now, are, we'll have that detail where our grapes and all are raised and everything. Okay, we'll have that nice uh, detail where our grapes are raised and all uh, by putting that boundary line around it. Now I'm going to do my profile cut for the grapes. That can actually be, uh, you know, bundled in with my other profile toolpath. And we're going to do a profile all the way through the material, half inch on the outside. I'm not going to create tabs, but yes, you do want tabs, but I'm not going to put tabs in here so I can delete these parts, the waste material of these parts, and you can see them and everything. So we're going to preview the visible tool pass. Okay. And this part here would be attached to the front of that. Uh, give it some nice, uh, you know, uh, some nice color or, or whatever you you know autumn spring whatever matches their kitchen uh, this bottom part here will be attached to the front of this uh, no hardware you don't want any screws or anything showing or anything like that if you want to be fancy you can do some joinery half lap it whatever the case may be but a simple edge glue uh, will hold 
super strong uh, and if you get your uh, seams right they'll disappear you know and so a uh, very simple dowel holder where you have just a dowel rod coming up in that teardrop as in version one here right very simple dowel rod for a uh, napkin break or we can start to get creative and we can have this profile with any kind of front cover okay now you really want to get fancy put two high powered rare earth magnets in the front of this base put two high powered magnets on the back of this base so you can snap on and now you can create some different front covers for different holidays and occasions and things like that where it's interchangeable right again it's not just a one trick pony so you there you know you know what i mean uh you have a consistent profile down here this uh two and three sixteenths by you know half inch or three quarter whatever you want to use i'd probably go three quarter on this um and then whatever this centerpiece is again it could be a 3d model cut it could be a v-carve like what we've done here uh, you can have it as a permanent fixture to where you glue it to the front if you want to get really creative you can have some rare earth magnets that hold really strong that are interchangeable where they can change uh, when the seasons change when the holidays come and things like that it makes it a very versatile uh, application in the kitchen you know uh, it changes with them you know and they can it gives you something else to sell they can buy more and more of those accessories from you uh, so uh, you know what I mean uh, give me a thumbs up and or a yes or whatever if you know what I mean <laughs> all right so very interchangeable very very interchangeable application All right, hopefully y'all are still with me. <clears throat> okay. Wall hangers. Last one, guys. Last one of the evening. Uh, I'm just, you know, I'm throwing these different types of varieties of uh, things. You know, this is just the uh, one little application, one little thing in a kitchen that we can do. We've got uh, we've got cutting boards. We've got all kinds of stuff that we can do that we're gonna got coming up for my country kitchen decoration. Um, but our wall hanger. Now the wall hangers uh, are going to be multiple parts that you will be assembling. Um, with this, you can get super duper creative uh, for um, for your applications and things. Um, we know a very basic um, wall hanger if we were to let's let's kind of get some realism going on here uh, CNC carved wooden paper towel holder And let's look at some of the beautiful images of things that people are making. So, um, I did say paper towel holder, didn't I? Yeah. All right. Oh, I wish that was a bigger picture because that's a pretty cool one. See that mountain lion in the background? Uh, you've got your two end caps that are holding on with your paper towel rod. I mean that is super duper elaborate you know for a wall hanger uh, you can get super basic right super basic you know uh, you can get a uh, little bit of edge fanciness whatever you want it to be uh, you can I mean so many things right we could do you know on those countertop holders you could do some 3 and 3d carving uh, like you see here and if you have a fourth axis you could do some decorative carving at the top or this could be a finial that could be carved on the flat table and then attached to the top of your dowel I mean there's so many things
that you can do oh, a cute sailboat there you go you know what I mean so I really you know uh, heck <laughs> I think that's funny as all be it uh, you know just super duper creative right so it, it, there's so many things that you can do there's so much inspiration out there for you to take ideas from and, and make it your own you know you do your own thing um, for our wall hanger we're going to uh, first start off with kind of the back plate and oops once again always make sure you're working in an appropriate layer and guys I'm just trying to give you ideas things that you can sell if you're using your CNC to make money you can sell signs and stuff all day long but let's take it let's take it another step let's add some elements and things uh, things that are practical uh, any items for the home are good sellers and this is what I'm trying to instill uh, this is the kind of the 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 the, the uh, emphasis behind all of these projects is things that are that you could make to sell to bring in a little extra money and income or just make to give away for cool gifts or make them for yourself for your kitchen whatever you know all right so for our wall hanger we're going to have um, our back plate now on the back plate. Uh, I want the size now it's like I said a typical paper towel roll is about 11 inches in length and um, depending on the size of my material I'm gonna have two side pieces right where my uh, uh, roll is gonna be between and so what if I, if I have three quarter inch three quarter inch that's an inch and a half you know where you know what uh, you know and so we want to make sure that we size our uh, holder properly. So 11, uh, I'd like to add in that, uh, oops, inch and a half, hit my equal sign. And then I want to give myself some room. I don't want to be a tight fit. I don't want. I want to be able to roll this roll of paper towels and get a paper towel off there. I don't want to fight it like a public bathroom stall where you can't get the toilet paper out of the roll. You know, I want it to be nice and clean. So we're gonna go. We're gonna give ourselves about a, a quarter to a half inch clearance on each side. So let's go with a. Uh, let's go with a half inch clearance on each side. So let's go uh, with another one inch. And there we go. All right. So for this, I should have an overall size of 13 and a half inches by, and for right now, let's go three and a half. That's going to be my kind of my back plate because I'm going to be doing some stuff up here. Uh, and let's get rid of these two rectangles. They were just there for examples and let's get this on an appropriate size of material uh, 13 is 13 so we gotta go let's go 14 I'm gonna give myself a little bit of room all right <clears throat> did it not take bear with me at 14 and hit ok not cancel hit ok all right, so let's get this centered up left to right on the board. And uh, for the bottom of this, for the bottom of this, I'm going to go into node editing mode and I'm gonna grab this middle point here. And I'm literally just gonna pull down this point here. And these two lines, I'm going to turn into a Bezier curve. I'll do one at a time. Uh, because I may end up just cutting this and mirroring it that way they match but I want to pull this up to a nice curve and I'm going to I am going to uh, cut this vector
Reason why I'm cutting it is because I'm going to delete this right edge so that I can mirror, mirror this left edge, creating a mirror copy, flipping about job center and flipping it horizontally just to get that nice decorative uh, shape to my bottom here. And I'm going to join, join those two open vectors together to make one closed vector. Okay. Now, here in this upper part, I want to um, basically, I'd like to do some kind of 3D work. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and draw another rectangle. I'm just going to snap it and kind of, I don't know why I'm keeping them separated, but I'm just keeping them separated so I have different boundaries for my model cut so I can use the selected vectors of a, as the boundary, right? And all. And uh, the, uh, for this, let's take a look at our clip art that comes with our software and let's see what we've got here. Um, I'm gonna go into objects and people and let's see what they give us. <clears throat> Nothing there that falls into the country kitchen kind of theme. Uh, let's go into plants and fruit. All right, I want to center this up uh, in this rectangle. So if I select that rectangle last and I go into my alignment tool, uh, I can um, center it up and down where it sits. Uh, I'd like to uh, bring this over and, oops, not the whole thing, dadgummit, dadgummit. Let me get back to where I was. Okay. I'd like to bring my model over. Uh, it's easier to drag. Hold down your uh, I want to overlap this center line just a little bit. You'll see why here in a second. Now overlap ever so slightly. Now in Vetric uh, VCarve uh, Desktop and Pro 9, 9 uh, we have the ability in our modeling on our levels we have the ability to turn on mirror mode okay uh, we have a mirror mode now 8 and 8.5 you guys don't have this so you would just mirror it like you would mirror anything else uh, using your mirror tool but I want to use the mirror mode on this and I'm gonna go from right to left since the lotus flower is on my right uh, I want to mirror this. Now you're not going to see anything in the 2D view uh, when we mirror, but if we look at our 3D view, you will see that mirrored object. And um, the reason why I like using the mirror tool is because of the way that it nicely blends uh, these objects. And uh, to give you an example, so I'm mirroring from left to right. So anything uh, that crosses over uh, this center line uh, is going to be eliminated. And it's going to just blend the two halves together. So if I take my model and move it over ever so slightly more, uh, right about there, if I look at my 3D view, you will see that blend um, you know taking place uh, you'll see where it blends and uh, it just creates a nice little blend of those items and things and so uh, with this uh, three-dimensional model here I can add some other things to it 
Uh, let's look in our clip art again. And this time, I want to kind of Let's go into our decorative. I'm looking for that piece that, 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 that makes sense with this and if nothing does then I wouldn't use it. Um, All right, now I do not want the flowers in this uh, this area here. I, I'm probably not going to use this model, but I just want to you know show you this. Uh, we would have a new level. We would insert a new level with mirroring mode off, and that flourish would be in that level, so that way uh, you don't get that mirrored effect. Okay. Uh, so now let's get this sized appropriately uh, for and I don't have a whole lot of room if I did I would probably have something kind of hanging down uh, you know between that hook but this uh, this is not the right application so let's delete that what else do we got in clip art anything that fits if not we'll stick with that um, All right, let's look at our 3D view. Let's make sure that that heart flourish is on level two. Uh, we are going to add it uh, to the, the not add it. We're going to merge it to the model, um, and then we're going to give that in its properties. We're going to give it some base height. We're going to give it some shape height first of all. Uh, maybe a nice uh, eighth of an inch shape height. Get the detail popping out of there a little bit. There we go. And let's give it some base height. Let's take a look at this as a whole. I'm going to go side by side here for a moment so I can see these changes in real time. Okay. All right. So for my model and everything, let's uh, get back into our 2D view, our drawing area here. And again, keep in mind, we cannot see this other side here. So what's a way that we could, what would be a way that we could um, to see that other side? Uh, Create a vector boundary around the components. See there? 
it, it, it creates that boundary around that other side so we can at least have something to work with when we're as we're shaping this uh, and everything all right so with that I want to do uh, a nice little shape here I'd like to have these guys not just I'd like to have them kind of uh, emulated in their cutout so uh, instead of just a square back right with a 3d in it I'd like to have a little bit a little bit of flare uh, so I could either radius these edges you know or I could kind of create a little decorative uh, cut and I think what I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna offset this outward a great deal uh, large amount I'm gonna go probably two inch offset Uh, let's go with a one and a half or one let's go one and a quarter okay and I'm gonna stretch this out to here I'm gonna bring this down and I'm going to trim All right, so this will be our profile here. Uh, we could uh, do some little V carving over here in these open spaces if we didn't want anything. We could find something else to go there, but you don't have to. You, you don't always have to fill the space. You know, uh, less is more sometimes. Uh, in in uh, in May, uh, less is more, and uh, it uh, you know. All right, so let's go ahead and let's create our 3D finish toolpath. Let's kind of uh, get this going here. So 3D finish toolpath, this is a very low model, so I probably don't need a uh, rough cut. Uh, we're going to use the selected vector as the boundary. This vector here, because I do want this raised up, um, I'm going to use a... Uh, 16th inch tapered ball nose. Try to get the best detail I can out of the flower. I'm going to raster cut this model and calculate it. Now it's going to calculate both sides of this model. Even though you cannot see it in the 2D view. Uh, the software knows it's there because we're in mirror mode for the uh, for that level, and so um, it's going to uh, it's going to uh, carve or create a toolpath based off of what is in that tr uh, that tree component um, that component tree. almost done that 16th of an inch bit is working its way around so guys and girls while we're waiting for this to calculate give me some feedback what do you think of these uh, classes what do you think of this new Monday style uh, a little bit more involved classes uh, 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 things but uh, but also what do you think of the topic for tonight um, you enjoying it bored to death let me know, good and bad. All right. Stop right there. Er. See that white line in the bottom of that uh, cut? That means I cut through that material. So let's look at my model. I didn't even look at my job setup. Uh, let's uh, my material setup to even look at what my model height and everything was. Uh, so yeah my model was at the bottom of the material it needs to be at the top it needs to be at the top 
Uh, it's only uh, out of that... Uh, I don't want to lose too much detail of it. I still got a good chunk of meat here, uh, but I'm going to reduce it down ever so slightly. I'm going to hit that set button on that model uh, Z height, and I'm going to bring it down to 0.25. I'm just going to reduce it down a little bit. All right. So let's bring it back up to the top here, and I do want to add a little bit. I'm going to add a you know a small little bit of meat uh, on top of it, so I don't have any flat spots in my flowers or the heart or anything. And uh, we're going to click OK. Now we're going to recalculate that toolpath properly. Um, and so let's go back in there once again. 16th inch end mill, a uh, ball nose end mill. Uh, I'm going to be using the selected vectors as a boundary. I am going to be rastering, and I uh, do not do not want to go beyond that boundary because it's already the outside border. So I want to go ahead and calculate that. Excellent. Thanks, guys. Um, good, good. Yeah, Rochelle, I mean, it, it, that's exactly the point. Um, you may not always like the project itself, right? It might not have any interest in it whatsoever, but uh, the, the fundamentals of the lesson, uh, the, the, the way we approach things, the way we create and calculate and draw all of those are useful because they apply all across the board no matter what the uh, uh, the the subject is so you may not like the project but the techniques for sure um, all right let's uh, once again let's preview that selected toolpath Excellent. We're not worried. I'm not worried about this top part here uh, because that is getting uh, cut off. Now, my if I want that nice shape at the top instead of a flat top, I do need to. <laughs> I should probably right. I should probably uh, put. Um, uh, set that up on my board appropriately right uh, <laughs> all right let's um <clears throat> let's give myself a little bit of room up there at the top let's bring this one down just a little bit and let's take this as it is the size that it is and let's bump it down ever so slightly to get on the board there we go and then let's uh, let's do that again. Let's quickly recalculate uh, that toolpath. I could have left it and just had a flat top there, but why? Why? Why do all that uh, decorative offsetting and things to create that you know edge at the top, uh, and then just only to cut it off at the end, right? Um, excellent. All right, so we're calculating through. Now this is only the back plate. We got it. We got to. Uh, you know, um, create our side plates and things, and you know, where, where, where the napkin holder is. We'll do that on a different layer. Okay, 
Let's reset this preview and preview that selected toolpath. Uh, this is a pretty decent cut. So we would most likely uh, do a rough cut toolpath so our ball nose bit isn't working so hard. Removing all that material. We'd probably do a rough cut to uh, hog away most of that waste. Oh, I don't know why I had the hiccups. Uh, to hog away most of that waste and everything and all. All right, excellent. Let's go ahead and turn off that fill color so we can see our, our project piece here. Okay, let's go ahead and while we're at it, let's come in here and um, I'm going to uh, take these two boundaries for a moment and I'm going to copy them to a new layer and I'm just going to call this uh, back board boundary or actually profile profile and the reason why I'm doing that is that'll give me a moment uh, an opportunity to um, turn this off for a second uh, leaving just my backboard profile open so I can do some trimming and blending so I'm going to trim those lines away and create one profile here that I'm going to use for my final profile cut. <clears throat> Cutting through the material uh, with my quarter inch end mill on the outside of the cut, we'll do our profile cut. Okay. Got our little backer piece. All right, so now on our side pieces, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, let's turn on our other layer again here. Make sure it's active. Now, let's create a new layer actually, a new layer. This is gonna be our side. not too clever with the name right side parts that'll work um, and uh, let's turn off this layer we got to draw our side parts you know in a side profile of course they're profile cuts but what I would like uh, is my paper towel roll if I if I could draw this kind of in a rectangle here uh, my paper towel roll is going to it's got a uh, length like I said of about 11 inches and it has an outside diameter of about five and a half inches unless you get the bounty big roll or something like that, right? So you need to kind of <laughs> leave yourself, uh, you know, a little bit of room here and everything. Uh, I don't want my roll of paper towel covering up that backboard. You might, but I, I don't. So I want to come, you know, kind of give myself a little bit of room just in case it's a little bit bigger roll, more sheets, you know. And so in here, uh, for our center, We've got our, our dowel, right? So uh, running along our center, uh, again, I use one inch dowel. You can, whatever size you want to use, but uh, uh, this is going to be um, uh, this is going to be 11 and 3 quarters plus that half inch, uh, 12. Bear with me, uh, 11, 12. 13 and a half 15 inches by one inch and I want it centered like it was running through this middle rectangle here I want it centered oh not that center this center So <clears throat> with this drawn out, uh, this tells me where, you know, kind of how I need to, uh, how, how is my uh, parts going to uh, connect in here? So if I had my side pieces, um, they would 
be a total of uh, three quarters of an inch wide if I'm using three quarter inch material. Uh, half inch if I'm using half inch. I'm going to go three quarter. That's what I've kind of designed this off of. And uh, we're going to go about um, three and a half inches. Okay. And um, on this, you'll see what we're going to do up here. We've got another, let me take a measurement here. We take a measurement here. Vertical measurement from this point to this point. Uh, we've got about three quarters of an inch. Um, and so <clears throat> on that, we're going to do a nice little kind of uh, shape to swing down. You'll see that when we do it actually in the side profile. But, you know, laying things out uh, just kind of gives you an idea where things go. So if I were to take uh, that, that uh, side piece and mirror it to the other side, you know, we've got our... Um, and let me get this rectangle, let me get this uh, centered. There we go. Uh, so we've got our, you know, we've got our space where our roll can roll very easily. We've got our side pieces, which are uh, these two parts here that we're about to draw out. Um, and uh, then, of course, we've got our backer board. Now, on our side pieces, the reason why I drew this out this way is one, it's going to tell me where my hole placement needs to be on this, okay? The hole placement. And number two, it's gonna tell me uh, how long my piece needs to be. So on my size here, the height is three and a half inches and I have, remember, another three quarters of an inch up here, so we would add that to it. But my placement of that vertical measurement from the center of my dowel to the bottom of my part, my hole placement needs to be 1.1082. That's my magic number, 1.1082. So let's go into, uh, <clears throat> let's turn off the wall piece. Let's, we don't necessarily need the simulated paper towel roll. We don't need the paper towel holder. We don't need these side pieces. But we do, that's my magic number, so I'm actually gonna move that over there. That's what, I, that's what it tells me I need to know. All right, let's draw these out so, um, <laughs> Again, now you're looking from a side view now as we draw them because that's how we're going to cut them. Uh, the overall height is going to be that three and a half inches plus that three quarters of an inch. Okay. And the overall width, like I said, uh, we've got, uh, you know, our rolls are typically about five and a half inches in diameter. Well, I don't want them pressed against, uh, when I put that roll in, I don't want it pressed against the backboard. Again, like just like I don't want it pressed against the, the sideboard. So um, I'm going to come out probably about six inches. So that's what my width is going to be. And on here, that first three quarters, if I snap to the top of this and I draw a guideline, a guideline relative to its position, negative three quarters of an inch, go down, you know, here. Uh, this is where that original holder piece from that point down that I drew, and this was kind of that top area. Uh, what I'd like to do on this is from back to front, I'd like to have a nice little drop down in things. Uh, but first, before I do that, I want to get my hole placement to see exactly how far down I'm going to go. I don't want a real big square block, you know, sticking out of the wall kind of deal. 
So let's get our hole placement uh, for this. Uh, we're going to be at circle. I want the center of this circle. It's gonna be one inch in diameter. Uh, actually, it's gonna be a little bit more. I don't want it to be tight in there trying to stick that dowel in and out. Where'd that go? Uh, we're gonna go. One and a quarter. Okay. Now, I gonna take my guide rule here and I'm gonna to snap to the bottom front corner here. And I'm going to move up, move up, create a relative guide in a positive direction. That one point, oh gosh, what was it? 1.1082. 1.1082. Create. Okay. Oh, look how, man, that eyeballing was good. Look at that. That's pretty darn close to center of that now, huh? Not too shabby there. Now the center, my center here, I'm gonna be the center. And so I'm going to snap right about there. Now I want if again if this was a if this was a five and a half inch roll, five point five D diameter right I want that clearance in the back and, and the you know the front's no big deal but the clearance in the back I do not want to be rubbing that back and and I only have a very small amount um, you know uh, so I may want to take since you know I don't mind if I go forward a little bit I may bump this forward ever so slightly off center and ultimately you know take that away from that backer a little bit now that I have this uh, let's get rid of this circle now that I have my hole placement um, I can come in and start kind of profiling my shape here. So what I would like is um, I do want from this point, this low point, I want a, uh, where do I want to put it with though? I want to get that's too I want to give myself a little bit uh, I want to give myself a little bit what am I doing I'm, 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 what am I doing escape I want right about there so bear with me a second right about there I want a nice little arc coming from here to here nice little curve nothing too dramatic <clears throat> and then from there I'm gonna use my straight line tool uh, and this is where turning the grid on helps if you if you you know uh, ever want to use your grid and stuff but uh, from here uh, I'm going to come up at a 45 let me get to 45 degree angle right about 0.625 let me get to it Right about there that L and that a uh, you know help that uh, you know where, where you're gonna be and um, 
I'm going to uh, step over a quarter of an inch. Let me pop over there. Quarter of an inch, and then I want to finish off strong. Uh, Oops, that was not an arc. Uh, bear with me a second. <clears throat> oh, put that back in there. Let me turn that into node editing. Turn that into a Bezier curve. I'm going to pull this one straight up. That's fine. I don't like that middle part, so we're just going to do a nice little reverse arc. We're going to go from here to here, and we're going to kind of also subtly cove. Let's get our scissors in there, clean up that mess. Okay, get our scissors. Let's trim away this line, and we're good there. Okay. So with these parts, we're going to uh, select all these vectors. Let's get rid of these guidelines so we can see what's going on here. Delete all those guidelines. And we're going to come in here, and I've got an extra vector hiding. What is that? I need to do some scissor trimming on that. Let's go trim away that straight line. There we go. All right. So once again, we're going to select all these. All right, it is selected. Good. And I'm going to take, and I need two of these, left and right. So I'm going to mirror this. I'm going to open up the mirror tool, and I'm going to flip it horizontally. Uh, and uh, to minimize my waist, I'm going to flip it vertically. Whoops. Turn off the create mirror copy. Uh, I'm going to flip it vertically. And I'm going to move this over. Move this one down. All right, um, leave some room for clamping, whatever the case may be. Uh, let's create our profile cuts. Profile cut. Now, when you do a profile cut, we're cutting on the outside of the line. The software is super smart. It knows we have inside vectors. So it's going to, even though we're cutting on the outside line out here, it's going to reverse the tool path and it's going to cut on the inside of the inside vector, the inside line, which is what we want. So I don't need to create two separate tool paths. Um, let's go ahead and calculate those. Reset our preview. Preview the uh, selected uh, tool path. <laughs> it would help if uh, you actually deleted the waste and not the actual parts that we wanted to keep. Uh, one more time, preview the selected tool path. All right, very simple, our two parts. Now, these are going to be attached uh, to the back uh, or to the, you know, the front of this part. Uh, we have two choices. One, we can uh, we're going to end up screwing from the back, or we can glue. But we gonna we are going to create the pocket 
for these. Uh, we're going to create a little pocket for these to uh, slip into. And um, on that on that backer board, uh, you don't have to. You can flush mount it and everything. Um, if you reduce the overall size, you can you can mount it on the sides of them. But I'm gonna they're gonna be coming out the front. So I want to uh, turn off those side parts in our backer uh, wall piece and everything here that. I know it's in here. Where is it at? Where is it at? Oh, side parts backer profile. Okay, uh, we're going to create our part here. It's going to be um, three quarters of an inch thick. All right, three quarters thick. And overall uh, height, our overall height was, what was our overall height there, buddy Roo? That tells me where the highest peak of my arc is. That don't tell me my back. Let me grab a tape measure measurement. Sorry, guys. Bear with me a second. Vertical from this point to this point is four and a quarter. I knew it was somewhere close to there. Okay, four and a quarter. Okay, so this rectangle is going to be 4.25. Going to snap it down to this line actually we can go a little bit nah, that's good all right let's get this mirrored over create that mirror copy flip it horizontal <clears throat> now on this pocket if I when I do the pocket cut and everything I don't want the router bit stopping here leaving a little bit of meat on the side here uh, you know and everything so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna expand this just ever so slightly overlapping my line for this pocket cut same thing here expand this ever so slightly to the right just so that bit can get over there and give you a nice clean edge when it pockets this little area out here um, uh, up here same thing when it because now this is already all pocketed out from this 3d finish but this is a chamfer here it's got a little angle because of that uh 3.6 degree or 5.4 degree ball nose i used it's got a little degree angle i want i need a flat so i'm going to extend this up just a little bit so my bit can get in there same thing here and there's no no exact measurement I'm just going up just to give my bit some room to clear out and these two guys are gonna be pocket cut very shallow they don't need to be very deep just enough to kind of get our pieces to kind of sit into and lock into that way they're vertical and all it creates a little channel um, pocket cut uh, I don't really need to go a quarter of an inch but if I did, let's see how deep that would be. Let's um, quarter of an inch uh, calculate. Reset the preview. If I preview this profile or this pocket cut, my profile cut of my board and my 3D finish, if I preview those three visible tool paths, Let's see what we end up with. Uh, so, Howard, uh, while this is calculating out or, or previewing out, um, you if you have the Vetric Aspire, you could. Now you can go you can go online and you can find models, uh, you know, from designandmake.com, eBay you know uh, online just you know thingy verse there's a lot of different models and stuff but picture if you wanted to convert a picture to a 3d model uh, that would require 
the Vetric Aspire software. The Vetric Aspire software. All right, so if we look at this, um, we've got our uh, areas here where our two side pieces will mount. They will screw from the back. Uh, so if you wanted to ensure that you're getting a nice center hole for your screws, um, you know, so you can pre-drill them so they don't blow out. If you wanted to, you could come in here and say, uh, I want a hole here. And I'm just going to go with a small um, You'll see why in a moment. I'm going to throw this in transform mode, hold my control key down. I'm also going to hold my alternate key at the same time while I hold my control, and it's going to restrict me to uh, this axis here, up and down. I can't, you know, no matter where I move my mouse, you know, I'm only on these two axes Y or X. Okay? Y or X. So I want to come down and right about here is where my second screw is going to be. And I want to take those two and mirror those. <clears throat> and these I'm just going to very simply uh, do a pocket cut with a V-bit. I'm just creating a little dimple. Uh, I mean, a heck, I could, depending on my screw and everything, if I wanted to pre-drill it with the CNC, you know, if I had an eighth inch end mill or something, I would, uh, you know, uh, but I, I just hand drill it because I'm going to be chamfering it from the back side with my chamfer bit. Uh, but... Um, in my drill I'm not gonna do that on the CNC it's not a two-sided project uh, let's see here let's grab my 60 degree V bit <clears throat> and I'm just gonna go a, a small amount um, Oh, let's not do a pocket cut. Let's do a V cut. V carve. Don't need a flat depth on it. Uh, 60 degree V bit. Uh, I want to start at that quarter of an inch down uh, because I, you know, I just pocketed that out, right? So I want to start at a quarter of an inch down and I want to calculate this. And that's all that's going to do is create some little uh, starter points so I know where to pre-drill. And then I'll pre-drill these from the front, and then in the back I will chamfer them. Uh, th that way, if there's any blowout for any reason, it's going to blow out the back, and my chamfer, my countersink, my countersink bit is going to clean that up. So this would be our backer board, and then we have our two side pieces. Oops, ah, that's not our side pieces, is it? That's our side pieces. And that's going to be the three parts for our very simple wall hanger uh, decorative uh, wall hanger napkin holder. So we've got a lot of different options. We've got uh, uh, countertop napkin holders that if we want to get creative have interchangeable uh, medallions that hang from our leather strap uh, or for, with magnets that snap to the front of our holder. Uh, if we, um, uh, you know, we've got a nice little uh, decorative napkin holder that we could just customize to no end, right? We could do all kinds of things with that. And then... Uh, ultimately we have our final 
uh, wall hanging. So th a good variety uh, of, of different things. And again, those medallions that hang on the leather strap, those are extra accessories that people can, it's continued buying, repeat. You know, uh, it's just those little uh, vending items and all. Hey, oh, I want one for Christmas, or oh, I'd love one for I'm having a party and it's a luau, you know, and I want some pineapples. Whatever, you know what I mean? And it's those little things, though that those those little accessories for the main product and stuff. And uh, the last uh, cut is a little chamfer there, and that's going to be our backer board for this piece. And once again, that model was in the clip art, brought it into the modeling uh, level. And all I did was turn that levels mirroring mode on from right to left because I did bring it into the right side and mirrored it over. And then I created a second level in that component tree that had no mirroring turned on for that heart flourish, give it a little bit of a base height so it builds up and uh, those are three models that are currently in your Vetric software your Vetric software if you wanted to duplicate this uh, and also I am going to be providing these uh, these pro these projects that you saw tonight uh, you will have uh, project files on the appropriate size boards uh, and um, the appropriate name tool pass and everything you'll see those for tonight's country kitchen paper towel holder lesson. <laughs> All right. Um, so Howard uh, put a scrap piece of wood under the background to drill into, keep it from blowing out. Absolutely, a backer board, just like a waste board we would use on our CNC. We would put a backer board when we're hand drilling. Or, or to prevent blowout um, you're absolutely 100% correct on that all right guys and girls I hope you enjoyed tonight's lesson I know it was a long one but think of just out of these three basic designs of the nap the paper towel holders your wall hanger and your uh, two styles of uh, countertop and then all the little varieties the whole way you can change them up you can start to create a whole line of different cool things um, and then our napkin holder for those picnics or for those cafes or for those you know people's homes or whatever uh, for the centerpiece on their their table we can do some really decorative uh, things as well and now we can take those three or four simple concepts and turn it into hundreds of different designs uh, different models, different layouts, different things. You know, we can change the complete backer board and the, the 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 shape of it and the look. Hell, we could put a shelf up here or a drawer. I mean, there's so many things that you could do. Uh, but this gives you a basic footprint to work off of on some items that could be really good sellers at your markets, uh, your farmers markets, especially your flea markets. Uh, fairs and things like that or your website and all so hopefully uh, you can take something away from this uh, and I'll have these files uh, together for you guys soon uh, and also uh, stay tuned for a promotion that we're putting out on the Facebook page tonight uh, as soon as I get it done, I uh, got a promotion coming up on some lasers for you guys and girls. If, some, if a laser, the idea of a laser interests you, uh, we've got uh, we've got uh, some deals coming up on lasers that we're going to uh, uh, a nice sell going on uh, for our big lasers. Uh, and uh, I also for you mini carvers uh, that may or think be thinking about upgrading and all. Uh, keep an eye out on the post. Uh, these these promotions and this sale is only for Digital Woodcarver customers only. It's not for the public. Uh, but we do have a very nice uh, used 2440 unit with less than about 20 hours of runtime on it. Uh, 2440 three axis unit uh, for I think it's like 3,500 bucks. 
uh, it's the stand vacuum system it doesn't come with the software because you guys and girls already have the software uh, if you wanted to upgrade your software for, you know or anything like that you could have whatever but uh, uh, we've got a nice really nice used unit uh, that literally uh, it's a it's a new model black top stand and everything three axis unit that has um, less than 20 hours runtime on it big discount uh, that uh, that's going to be part of our laser promotions tonight just to let y'all know so keep an eye out for those posts you'll see them late late this evening okay uh, William I don't know if I'm coming to IWF Burl and I, we, I we're doing the we're, we've got a big uh, thing going on with Vetric in October um, and uh, we've got uh, we've got three shows in August but uh, um, I don't know if we'll have time to come to IWF if we do we don't go there as a vendor we go there as attendees just for marketing purposes to see the guys and girls from Vetric and talk with the people from the woodworking shows that are hanging out over there and stuff but uh, we wouldn't do it as a we wouldn't do it as a uh, uh, we wouldn't be vending there but with the shows that we have in August we're going to be in Boonville New York and uh, Oh shoot! Uh, another place. <laughs> Where are we gonna be? Uh, we're gonna be in Boonville, New York, and oh, standby. Where are we gonna be? <clears throat> Boonville, Boonville, Boonville. Video shows. <clears throat> Looks like we're only going to be in Boonville, uh, the 17th and 19th. Uh, Great Lakes, uh, Wisconsin is going to be in September. So, I don't know. Uh, Burl and I went last time. It was in Atlanta uh, just to market and walk around. But we'll think, uh, we'll think about, uh, we'll be looking around and stuff and all. IWF is the big machines. I mean, commercial, you know, and things like that. Uh, so, we don't really, it, it's not our... Um, marketplace uh, so we we go there as attendees uh so we might be there um but yeah uh keep an eye out long story short keep an eye out for some posts uh we got a post coming up uh with some uh some great sell great sell uh and it's only it's only for from today to july 1st that's it and it's only for customers it's not going to be promoted to the public. It's only for customers, so keep an eye out for that. All right, guys and girls. Uh, the William, the next closest show to Metro Atlanta is Atlanta. <laughs> um, let's see here. I'm going to be in Wisconsin. Uh, we're going to be in uh, Minnesota, Pennsylvania. Uh, let's see here. Mid South, where are they located at? Mississippi. Gonna be in Mississippi. Ohio. Hickory, North Carolina for the Woodworking Extravaganza. That'll be our, probably be the closest one. Hickory, North Carolina, will probably be the closest one to um, nor uh, to uh, to anywhere close to Orlando or Atlanta until next year the woodworking shows when we're back in Atlanta uh, which is going to be in um, March of 2019 so yep yep all right ladies and gentlemen I want to thank you again it's 1030 we are going to call it a night uh, wait we're in Pen uh, Pen Pennsylvania uh, you guys, digitalwoodcarver.com on our shows page shows all of our shows, but the Pennsylvania show is going to be, uh, let's see here, uh, Seven Springs, Pennsylvania, Mother Earth News Fair, September 14th through the 16th, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday in Seven Springs, Pennsylvania. Check out our shows. Uh... Mississippi, we're in Mississippi, M I S S I S S I P P I. Um, that is going to be the Mississippi State University John W. Starr Memorial Forest, 
approximately eight miles south of Starkville, Mississippi. That's going to be September 21st and 22nd for the Mid-South Forestry Equipment Show. Mid-South Forestry Equipment Show, uh, uh, just uh, eight miles south of Starkville, Mississippi, September 21st and 22nd. All right, you guys and girls, good night, and I'll see you next week. Thank you again for your attendance.